you know, until the last couple of years, I never paid much attention to drones. <laughs> But when I was making Cold Bloody Killers, um, it was a conscious decision to do something much more visual, you know, when I'm shooting with a camera, because I'd done Crime Lord, which was very, um, people talking over tables, a web series. On this film, I decided to make a feature film, that a movie that moves. The star of the film is the two characters, but also the star is the island, because Aaron, the Isle of Aaron, it's set on an island, is very much a star of the movie. You know, so you, you can't really have a, an island and hills and mountains and not really show that sort of visual, um, place and because the characters do a little sort of road trip around the island then you know you've got to have stuff like this you've got to have these visuals so this gave me a good excuse to use uh, the drone we drove about in the van in Aaron and uh, tried to get little gaps where the weather was decent and there was no rain we'd wait for the little gaps and we'd go out with the drone and the speed of this thing was incredible you know we'd, we'd find a little 20 minute window where there was no rain we'd go out with the drone set it up within like 60 seconds and be in the sky and we would just fly with it and it would just go and uh, it's got all different sort of intelligent flight mods you know like the, but a lot of shots that I've done were completely manual shots because when you're seeing a car travelling on the road or on the island from the sky it's very very simple to fly after a few I mean I did a lot of practice here in Paisley first where I live you know for maybe I don't know in total hours about five hours worth of practice on it before I went to Aaron to do it so a lot of the shots were just shot manually, but for some of the shots that um, Steve was with me on the Saturday driving around and then some of the shots like on the Sunday, I needed a shot of um, my character on the pier, on a pier on his own, and just a little shot of circling and coming into the, the coast, and I, I shot that myself, programming it, and the program, the intelligent flight mods, you could also get it to track you where it'll follow you. There's a little bit of video doing this, that was just a lot of test, that wasn't very good looking. It avoids obstacles, you know, there's so many things this, that this does, and if you lose a signal, I mean this thing can go for about four or five miles, but you, you know, you try and keep it within your your zone of view and below 400 feet because there's a law against it, you know, but once you get up to about two, three hundred feet, you don't need to go higher than any of that. You know, you can go a lot higher in uh, hill places like Arid, but when you're in a you know, a built up area, you know, you don't want to be going, you know, it doesn't look cinematic once it goes away really high in the sky anyway. But if the signal gets lost, it comes back to the home point where it left, you program it, it comes back exactly within inches to where it left. So incredibly safe, incredibly r robust, incredibly fast to learn and, and just completely fucking amazing. Ever since the, something like the iPhones came out, this is probably the piece of technology that I've ever been impressed by. And it's a joy to fly and battery time is about 20 minutes long. Um, as I said, I don't want to get into too many specs about it, but it's a great little drone. You know, it's expensive, you know, it's, uh, but it's not expensive when you see what it does. You know, already those shots that I've done on Sunday, it's already paid for itself. You know, I'll probably have to sell it, but it's paid for itself by the, sh the shots that I got. But I just want to see the Mavic Pro is an incredible little drone. It's the portability, just putting it in your bag or a case and just taking it, taking it out really fast. It's very low key as well. Nobody really looks at you when you're flying it because you've got this little controller. Some people think you're on your phone when you're flying it. You put your iPhone into here and you control it with the visuals on the iPhone, but you can fly it without the iPhone as well because if the iPhone battery goes off, which it sometimes does when it's too cold, then you can get the return to home button on here and it'll fly itself back home. And um, it's got a 4K camera, which is great. And I never really seen the benefits of 4K but say you've got a shot that's you can't get too close to a car or something you're, you're high in the sky then because it's 4k you can crop it and if you crop it you can get like a digital zoom effect and digital zoom effect is usually really bad because everything pixelates the more you start cropping but because it's in 4k if you crop it then you can get a closer up shot and it still retains you know the quality then um, probably into 1080 you know it, it retains a high quality because there's more pixels in it so it's in every level, you know, um, I've got nothing to say bad about this drone. There's always improvements, of course, but that's just nitpicking, you know, that's, I'm sure DJI will come up with the next version that's, you know, that does everything else and makes your fucking tea for you and, you know, you can use it as a razor, whatever the fuck. But for the moment, this is an incredible uh, drone. So I just wanted to talk about it and I'm all droned out, so I'll probably not talk about it anymore because 
It's about story, character and stuff. I'm no, don't want to be a drone pilot, I don't want to be a drone fanatic, but for using it for this film and possibly other films in the future and scenes, short films, um, I'll, yeah, this is the drone for me. Thanks for watching.